Hey everybody, my name is Justin, and today I want to do a stock analysis on Walmart, ticker symbol WMT. They just came out with earnings today, and their stock dropped about 11% today, which is very, very unusual for Walmart. So I'm asking myself, is it a good buy right now? So we're gonna dig in and we're gonna figure that out. So we're gonna take a look at the business. We're gonna look at the last quarter. We're gonna look at their earnings presentation, kind of see what they say there. We're gonna figure out what makes up Walmart, where do they make their money and how that is divided up within the company. And then we're gonna take a look at a 10 year financial view of the company, kind of see where they have been historically from sales per share, earnings per share, free cash flow per share, uh, different kind of metrics there. And then we're going to jump over and do an intrinsic value calculation based on operating income for this company. And this is the first video you watched of mine. Again, my name is Justin. I'm an accountant by day and I'm an investor at night. I just enjoy doing stock analysis and digging into companies. So let's just jump right into this. All right, so I'm on Walmart's website right now. I'm in the investor relations section. This is where you can find their annual reports, all their different SEC filings that they do, all types of events and presentations and all that good stuff. They have it all in here. Interesting to note, ju interesting to note just keep in mind that this is the first quarter of 2023 for Walmart. I really don't like when companies do that because it just it just messes <laughs> with your mind, but this is this is Q1 2023 so just keep that in the back of your mind all right and first thing we'll take a look at that kind of shows you kind of how walmart is divided up they really have three different revenue segments where they earn money and that is the biggest one which is about 69 percent of their total revenue is their general walmart business the brick and mortar stores that they do also any kind of e-commerce that they do within walmart the next biggest is their international Walmart brand, and that is 18% of the entire company. And then their smallest is Sam's Club, which makes up about 13% of the total company. And interestingly enough, this kind of shows you how they did last quarter, and this is a reason why they dropped in their stocks just dropped so much. They really had a bad quarter overall. So their, their net sales was up about 4% for their Walmart business itself. And then Walmart International, it was down 13%. Their operating income was down 35%. Even looking at their, their Walmart business domestically in the United States, I mean, their operating income dropped 18 percent so that that's pretty bad uh sam's club that was kind of their bright spot being up 17 and a half percent but again their operating income was down 20 percent so across the board all three business segments really had a big hit to operating income and then they didn't have any guidance last quarter but they came out with guidance uh this quarter and for full year and they're saying it's going to be about a 4% growth from the prior year, which is pretty much in, in line where they have been. So uh, analysts were not all that happy about their, their guidance and then also having such a, a bad quarter overall. And something else I want to show as well, this is on their earnings presentation from today. Even though the Walmart International brand was down about 13%, for this past quarter, there were still parts of their international business that were up year over year. In fact, their their Wal what they call Walmex, which is a Mexico and Central America, that was up about ten percent. China was up about seven percent, and Canada was up almost seven percent. So even though international was down overall, they definitely definitely had different aspects of international business that still grew, uh, you know, from from year over year. All right, so now let's go talk a little bit more about the business and kind of look at some different metrics with them real quick. And if we look at Walmart right now, and I was pulling this out of ticker terminal, they were showing a market cap of 407 billion. Now it's actually lower than that with the big pullback today and their stock price going down about 11%. I would expect their market cap to be somewhere around like 360 to $370 billion. So that market cap's just too big. Enterprise value is gonna go down as well. Right now it's trading around $130 for stock price, about 2.7 billion shares outstanding. 2.3 billion people work for, for Walmart, which is just crazy. That's just, <laughs> you can't even fathom that number. They did about $572 billion in revenue, they're trailing 12 months. 
uh, some just different metrics here. So their current P is, is almost a 30. Their forward P is around a 20, roughly. Their EV over EBIT right now is around an 18. Their for, forward EV over EBIT is 17. Now, if we look at competitors, and I highlighted a couple of lines here, which is operating profit margins and net profit margins. I compared Walmart to Costco, Target, and Amazon. And the reason why these are highlighted in blue, just trying to show how small margins are in the retail business overall. So operating profit margins, and this is as of the last quarter, Walmart was about 4%, Costco was 3.5%, Target was 8 Amazon was 4 And really, Amazon, the only reason why they really have uh, somewhat of operating profit margins is really drive uh, drivers from their, their AWS or their cloud-based business. If they didn't have that, uh, they would have been in serious trouble. That's what carried their entire operating income from, from last quarter. But it just goes to show you how, how small, how minuscule their, their profit margins are. So it's really a volume-based business, right? So if you think about Walmart, they just move so much product, Costco, Target, Amazon, that's how they can uh, push up their, their sales and then their profits overall. But from, you know, just a, a sales to sales basis or just, you know, from one order to an, you know, another order, uh, they don't make a whole lot of money on just one single order, it's just the volume that that pushes through. So it's pretty interesting there. But uh, enterprise value for Walmart, we said was you know, around 440 billion, Costco's 200 billion, Target's 100 billion, and then Amazon is 1 trillion. Huge, huge company. All right, so let's take a look at kind of what Walmart has done historically over the last 10 years. Uh, I I won't say I don't I don't care about historical numbers, uh, but I, it's kind of interesting to see kind of where the trend has been. It's more important what goes on in the future and in forecasting to see where it's, what's going to happen, which feeds into our intrinsic value calculations here in a second. But it, it's good to know kind of where the company has been, where they've been trending. So I look at a per share basis. And the reason for that is it factors in any issuance of shares, which is actually going to come in uh, very important when we look at a couple of slides here. Uh, issuance of shares and then buybacks are factored into the per share calculation. So sales per share, it is going up. It's not going up a ton, but you can see it's gone from $142 sales per share 2012 to 10 years later to about 208. Earnings per share has been fairly flat over the last 10 years, hanging around $5 of EPS, which is important. So keep that in mind because we'll come back to the slide here in a bit. Uh, operating income per share, pretty much flat, been around eight to nine roughly over the last 10 years. Uh, free cash flow per share, you can see it really went up in 2020. And I would assume that that was up because they were an essential business. A lot of other stores were closed at that time. Uh, so I'm sure that that really pushed sales up for, for Walmart. Um, in fact, if we go back up here, yeah, you kind of saw a tick up in 2020 and 2021. So interesting enough, maybe so must be something else going on with 2020 because sales didn't increase hugely for, from 2019 to 2020. So something's kind of driving that free cash flow number, which is interesting. Uh, book value has been going up slowly, but it is going up. Their ROIC and ROE has been pretty good. I like to see 10% or more. And they've been between 9 and 13% for ROIC. And the ROE has been between really 13 and 20%. Uh, so that looks pretty good there. So next up here, let's take a look at long-term debt payoff. And this is looking at free cash flow versus long-term debt. So how many years, based on their free cash flow, can they pay off their debt? And I want to see three years or less. Right now, they're at 3.2 years. So pretty much there. And they've been really good about managing their debt versus their free cash flow. So that looks really good. Gross profit margins, this is a, this is a weird graph. I probably should have changed this up. They, they're they about 25%. So it's actually pretty even. Uh, again, that graph just looks weird. So it's pretty even there. Operating margins, uh, pretty close, so between 4 and 6% historically. So net profit margins, this is where it uh, gets interesting. So you can actually see it dropping. It goes from 4 uh, three, two, one, and then kind of round two. So you can see that the trend has been going down for net profit margins. But if we go back up here and we look at earnings per share, you can see it's pretty much flat, right? So why is net profit margins dropping, but earnings per share is pretty much flat over the last 10 years? 
And, and the reason for that is because they're buying back shares. So since they're buying back shares, it's increasing the amount of earnings per share for, for a uh, shareholder. So that's that's what's actually helping keeping their EPS stable or, while their net profit margins have declined. Now, the company has come out and said, uh, and they've really been driving this, that they're trying to be more efficient with cost, trying to drive down their SG&A, and then they're actually going to be uh, tapering back some of their capital expenditures um, in, in the future, trying to save money to become more efficient and being uh, really more efficient, even on the bottom line for from a net profit margin standpoint. And they, they have a plan on doing that. And uh, analysts do believe that that's going to increase over time. So like their operating profit margin should increase by one basis point over the next five years. And that doesn't sound like much, but when you're pushing $570 billion in one year, that, that's a huge difference, huge difference. All right. And so let's go on here. So EV over EBIT, uh, that's enterprise value over basically operating income. Historically, it seems like the average has been around 14 or 15. Right now it's trading above 15. So that doesn't look like it's really good value right now. Uh, the uh, PE value over here in the right-hand side right now is trading it's roughly around a 20. I don't think it's updated as of today. Um, so that looks uh, a little higher than what their average has been over the last 10 years. So that doesn't look too good a value right now. Uh, dividends are, they're a really good dividend payer. So talking, you know, $2 up to $2 and 20 cents last year. So it has been going up, not, not huge increases, but it has been going up, but shares, like I was saying before with the earnings per share, I mean, they, they've really been buying a lot of shares back going from about 3.2 billion shares down to about 2.7 billion, 2.7 billion shares today. So that, that's a huge decrease overall. Now, if we look at these numbers from a compounded annual growth rate standpoint, let's do that now. All right, let me t blow this up a little bit so you can see it better. All right, so on the left-hand side here, these are uh, Kager. So Kager's compounded annual growth rate. Here's the growth for one year and 10 years. So their 10-year sales per share growth has been 4%. Earnings per share has been negative one. Operating income has been 1%. Free cash flow has been it's, it's flat, 0%. Book value has only grown 3% per year. This is on a per year or annualized standpoint. ROE on average over the last 10 years has been 15%. So that's good. ROIC is 9%. That's pretty good. Uh, debt payoff right now is, is about three years. So as far as management effectiveness goes, so those metrics look pretty good. But as far as growth metrics go, it's not looking very good. If you think about it, I mean, Walmart, at least from the U.S. standpoint domestically, has pretty much saturated the market. I, I know they're trying to do more for e-commerce, and even their Sam's Club business itself grew 22% on the e-commerce side, which is great. Uh, but as far as growth goes from Walmart side, they don't have a ton of growth. So it's actually better for them to try to save on costs. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to reduce their SG&A. Uh, they're trying to reduce capital expenditures uh, in the future to hopefully beef up the bottom line. Now, Sam's Club is, is their fastest growing business overall, grew about 17% last quarter. So those, so they still have some drivers to, to increase their the revenue, but a lot of the revenue has already been done. It's in the past. So, but as far as analysts go over the next five years, and we'll look at more details here in a second, they think it's good. Their sales is grow 3% per year. Net earnings is grow 14% per year. And then operating income is going to grow 4%. And then free cash flow is going to grow 16%. So if we go take a look at their analyst estimates more uh, in detail right now. Let me blow this up. So you can see as of uh, last uh, last year, uh, so as of January 31st, 2022, the company did about $567 billion of revenue like we talked about before. And they believe that in 2027, this is again from analysts, they think it's be around $665 billion. Now, they think, you know, it's going to grow roughly about almost 4% um, year over year from 2022 to 2023. And again, they're in the 2023 year for, for Walmart. Again, it's kind of weird, but that's just how their, their fiscal year runs. And that's pretty close. I mean, the management came out and, and put their full year guidance around 4%. So that's pretty darn close overall. Now, if we look at EPS uh, from a gap standpoint, it's about $4.87 today. And analysts think it's going to grow to $9.24 for 
five years out into the future. That's almost 14% per year growth. So again, analysts do believe that the company is going to decrease their SG&A, their capital expenditure. That's why their free cash flow is going to grow so much. Their free cash flow, they expect to grow from $11 billion all the way up to $22 billion over the next five years. So a lot, a lot of growth going on from what analysts think for this company. So next, let's kind of talk about, you know, intrinsic value for this company. You know, what do I think the company is worth right now? And how I'm looking at this company is from an operating income standpoint. So how the profit and loss statement works or an income statement, same thing. It's essentially it's revenue minus cost of goods sold, which gets to your gross profit. And then after that, you have all your SG&A, R&D expenses, and that's how you get to your operating income. Or also, you may hear like earnings before interest and taxes, basically the same thing. That's kind of what operating income is. And so that's what I'm looking at here. So I'm trying to figure out, you know, based on historical, but also more importantly, forecasting in the future, where's their operating income going to be? And then discounting it back to today, based on what returns I want, what is that intrinsic value? So if we look at the last five years for sales for, for Walmart, 495 billion all the way up to 567 billion. Now, as far as the, and these are pure analyst estimates going out over the next five years. So five, this is sales, 589, uh, 589 billion, 607 billion, all the way down to about $665 billion of net sales. So what I'm doing is after that, I'm forecasting out 3% per year. So if you keep if you keep in mind, Walmart's such a large company, it's gonna be harder and harder for them to grow over time, uh, especially sales. So I, I'm saying 3% per year. So I, they're gonna grow up to about $771 billion of revenue you know, uh, 10 years out from now. And then next trying to back into operating income. So what I'm doing is I looked at from a historical standpoint for, for Walmart and historically they have been at, if we go back to estimates real quick. So they've been around four to four and a half percent. That's kind of where their, their operating margins have been. Again, you know, retail, really small operating margins, net profit margins. That's just kind of the way things are. So per, pretty low. So I'm using analyst estimates going out the next five years. That's what these numbers are here. So they're they're saying roughly it's about four and a half percent. We can actually look at the more details here. So they're saying four and a half, four point seven percent, four point eight, four point eight, and then four point nine. So that's what I'm using for the next five years for operating income. And then after that, I'm just using a straight five percent. Uh, for the next two years, then jumping up to 6%, thinking that they're going to uh, be able to, you know, create more savings through SG&A, and then also be able to hopefully cut back in different areas. So I'm giving the benefit of the doubt right now that they're able to increase their operating uh, margins over time. So even though their net sales, I'm saying is only going to grow 3%, you know, from year six to year 10, I think they're actually going to grow operating margins from five to 6%. So that actually gives a 6% operating income growth for this company over 10 years. So based on that, I think the future uh, enterprise value for the company is $737 billion in 10 years. That's what this number is right here. Now, if you don't know what enterprise value is, that essentially market cap plus debt minus cash. So if you ever seen enterprise value higher than the market cap, that means the company has more debt on their books versus cash, where they have a, a smaller enterprise value versus market cap. That means they have more cash than uh, debt on their books. All right. And then what I'm doing is figuring out what the future stock price is. And I believe it's $252 based on a multiple of 15 and a future EBIT per share of, or operating income per share of around $16.82. So I get future stock price of 252 and then return on investment I want for this company return or required rate of return, 10%. I get an intrinsic share price of $97 for this company. And right now they're trading around $130 a share. So, and based on that, I get that's where I get that current market cap of 360, which I kind of talked towards the beginning of this video. So I think the intrinsic share price of this company is actually 
35% below than where it's trading at right now. Now, now Walmart has an incredible moat. Yeah, obviously, I talk about that because their, their brand moat, they have a very strong pricing moat. Even though that their, their net profit margins are so small, they really force their vendors to reduce their prices so they can buy the stuff as cheap as possible and then sell it to the, the end customer. That's why a lot of people go to Walmart because they know that's really the cheapest place they can get a lot of their items, right? And that's why I shop there for you know different items as well too. So certainly have a price moat and they also have a brand moat. Everybody knows Walmart. If you see a Walmart, you know exactly what you're gonna get if, if when you walk into that store. And they're also a dividend payer and they're doing share buyback. So if you you know if you factor that stuff in, it's gonna be a little higher than that. I don't factor in share buybacks or dividends because if companies get in trouble, first thing they do is cut back in dividends, or excuse me, share buybacks, first thing they do. And then secondly, they, they cut back on, on dividends overall. So now if you ask, okay, that's great. In terms of share price, I think it's $97. What would be return on investment for this company going forward based on today's stock price or future stock prices? So let's look at that now. So what this chart is saying is if the stock price is $97, I think I get a 10% return, right? And right now it's trading at 130. So I would expect somewhere between five and 10%. And this is just how I'm looking at this, guys. Obviously do your own due diligence. Uh, I'm just some guy on YouTube <laughs> looking at this and, and making projections based on how I feel about the company and what I've read and what I've seen. Uh, people can, 10 people can look at a company have 10 different intrinsic values for a company and return on investment. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's not a guarantee or anything. All right. But if the stock was around $62, I expect around a 15% uh, return on investment from this stock. So that's how I am looking at Walmart overall. Now, if we jump over and take a look real quick on what analysts think this company is worth, you can see, again, the stock price trade, uh, at the end of the day, it was $131. Analysts on average think the stock is worth $165 as of today. And there's about 32 analysts following the company, so a ton of analysts following the company. And again, that's why I really liked, you know, being able to use those forecasting numbers from analysts. Just with so many analysts following this company, I feel pretty confident or more confident that the numbers are going to be more accurate. So certainly analysts are, are bullish on the company. And again, that's why you have 10 people do terms of values, you get 10 different answers. I mean, look at the analysts right now, high of 190, you know, one analyst thinks it's worth $109. Another one thinks it's $139. I think it's lower than that. Um, but that, that's just kind of the way it is. All right, so that's what I think about Walmart. I mean, what do you guys think about Walmart? Do you think it's a good value right now? What kind of intrinsic value do you calculate for this company. Now that workbook that I was showing you guys before that goes through how to calculate intrinsic value and all those different tabs. I actually do offer that to my Patreon members. So if you join Patreon, you get access to my valuation templates, you get access to this, this full workbook. And I also post exclusive videos for Patreon members. And we also you also get access to the Discord channel as well. So if you're interested, I'll put a link down in the description for the Patreon. Love to see you over there if you're interested in that. Again, drop a comment down below. Don't forget to hit that like button on the way out. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'll catch you on the other side. Take care and God bless.